What about in the case of rape? Should it be legal or not? Well, you know, uh, uh, people always want to try and make that as one of those things. Well, how do you, how do you slice this particularly mm -hmm. tough sort of ethical question? It seems to me, first of all, from what I understand from doctors, that's really rare. If it's a legitimate rape, uh, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. All right, folks, I played that for a reason. We'll get to that. But joining us now is Thomas Schaller, professor of political science at the University of Maryland and columnist at the Baltimore Sun. He has a new book, The Stronghold, How Republicans Captured Congress but Surrendered the White House. There it is on your TV screen. And uh, welcome, Professor. Good to Thanks see you. Thanks for having me, Steve. All right, uh, let, me, let me ask you, um, you talk about the fact that um, the Republicans have to do something or the party will be further weakened. Uh, I think that's basically a uh, fair uh, uh, summary or analysis. Um, why, why, how has the party been weakened? The party is, is, has 32 or three state houses, governorships. Um, they just won the biggest landslide in, in 50, 80 years in the House. Um, they gained nine seats in the Senate. They control both of those. Um, of course, they don't have the White House, but uh, I mean, unless you consider that the only measure how, how have they been weakened in the, in the first place to, to say further weakened? No, I mean, the book is about why the Republicans' congressional wing has done some damage to the presidential wing. No, the congressional wing is doing just fine. And, you know, in the last 60 years, 70% of the time we've had divided government. That's right. the state of affairs in American national right. politics. It was presidents in the White House from the Republican Party and Democrats in Congress for a long time until sort of Clinton Gingrich came in. And then the party seemed to like partisan ships of the night that passed each other. Now you got the Republicans clearly the dominant conservative or congressional party for the last 20 years and the Democrats have won four out of six and five out of six of the popular vote the presidential race. What the argument is here is that there's a consequence to there. A, because American voters, when you ask them, especially the independents who decide, they actually really like divided government in poll after poll by about a two to one margin. And usually the out party agrees with them and tries to vote right, to, sure. you know, to balance the presidency because for some reason Americans think that the founding fathers didn't put enough checks and balances in the government. I don't know why that is. I don't know why, especially constitutional conservatives who, you know, venerate the Constitution. Why, why do we need a partisan check? Of course, the founders, you know, were basically operating under right, one right. party federalist government. But the point here is, like with the comment you started, is sometimes a congressional wing gets out ahead of the presidential party in a way that I think puts them in jeopardy. But I played that because that comment uh, in and of itself, if a Democrat had made it, would have gone away. Yet the media made that, and with the help of, of course, the media either picked up from the liberal Democrats or the Democrats and the Democrats picked up from the media and, and dubbed the whole Tampa convention that year the party of rapists and that's what the republicans face and in fact you could you know you could keep score of the presidential races and I, i'm sure your numbers are correct but uh prior to barack obama it had been uh, since 1976 that the democrats got a majority of the vote notwithstanding the fact that they won uh, with, twice with bill clinton he didn't get a majority either time so i i, I still think that we're a conservative nation i think we're in a, a war with the media the republicans are the conservatives are because democrats get away with statements like that and worse and nobody bats an eye you had a congressman grab a kid on the street if you recall and choke him nobody batted an eye um, but uh, you know you, you sneeze wrong if you're a Republican and that's it you're done well, on the other hand, Paul Ryan was one of the members of the House that voted for that a forcible rape amendment that Todd Aiken and others had supported. I don't know if he was one of the sponsors, but he definitely voted. And of course, you only have two choices when you vote on the right. roll call and amendment. But nobody noticed that about Paul Ryan until the comments came out about Aiken. So that's my point. To, as far as I know, nobody in the media was talking about Paul Ryan's vote on the very amendment to the House bill that was put in there as an attempt to sort of, you know, uh, clarify abortion law and some other larger piece right. of legislation until a member of the House running, of course, he was running for the Senate and Aiken in Missouri. It became a Missouri story, then it became a national story. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, so do you feel that, uh, what, that the Republicans have to run a, uh, a Jeb Bush to, uh, to win back the White House? I mean, House? the fascinating thing is that after 2012, when the GOP did this internal diagnostic in the Governing Opportunity Project, and they interviewed a thousand people from all parts of the party, elected officials and outside groups and stuff, their own conclusion is that their federal wing creates problems and that they should turn to state leadership, governors and state legislatures, right. which the Republicans are at all time high, as you pointed out correctly right. at the very beginning of the segment, right? And so you have members of Congress saying, we should nominate somebody who has at least served as governor. They may be a senator now, but nobody who's just come through the House and the Senate has never led anything, never managed anything. Like and Barack I think Obama. That's right. 
Yeah, I mean, look at our, you know, I mean, do they really want to put a Marco Rubio on the ticket? Do they really want to put a Rand Paul oh, on the but ticket? Both of the, but both the of them ticket? have a lot more experience than Obama had uh, when, when he ran. Anyway, and, and that Elizabeth Warren has as, as well, uh, to a certain extent. Great seeing you. The, the book, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. The Stronghold, How Republicans Captured the Congress but Surrendered the White House. We're coming back.